Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Jeff and today we're going to be diving into another deck tech with a Kaldheim deck here for you guys today. And we're diving into elves and super, super excited for this one. This is, elves are just going to be busted in this format. And what are the main reasons why elves are going to be busted? Well, we got a few cards that are really, really powerful. Tyvar Kel, uh, four mana. Let's go ahead and bring this up a little bit bigger. Uh, four mana, Planeswalker, elves you control have tap to add black mana. Well, tap to add black mana is a little bit awkward because a lot of the elves are green, uh, but we do have a few other things that we can be doing with it that it makes that actually worthwhile in this. We are playing Golgari elves, green and black, um, and in standard, really powerful. In historic, this will be busted, 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 but right now, at least in, in historic, this is still a really good card. Uh, the plus one ability, put a plus one plus counter on the target, on Target Elf, untap it, gains Death Touch until end of turn. I actually really like this ability. This is one of the ones where, like, you probably are mostly going to be using the negative ability to create an Elf Warrior token to kind of go more wide, which is what Elves typically want to do. Elves helps you ramp up, helps you do other things in general with this deck. But the plus one ability actually is nice to have, where if other people are going wide, other people are doing other stuff, just being able to give this Death Touch and make it a little bit bigger, it means that you can just get in for this incremental damage and kind of play up against like maybe a bigger board state where you are playing out all the tokens. You just kind of make one thing a little bit bigger, 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 hit in for a bunch of damage, and you can kind of uh, just kind of get an incremental damage. So I do like that set of Tyver Kel to it. It adds another variant to what the way that you can play with elves. And so I actually like it. Then the negative six ability, you get an emblem whenever an, you and whenever you cast an elf spell, it gains haste until end of turn. And you draw two cards, which is just crazy, crazy powerful. So uh, Elf Ball is kind of a thing that you want to be playing with elves generally, where anytime an elf hits the battlefield or you cast an elf, you get to draw cards. That's that's the way it's played in Historic right now, where you can kind of just keep drawing, drawing, drawing. I mean, right now it's also playing around Crater Hoof, which is a little bit different thing entirely. But you can just play this deck where you just kind of get so many elves on the battlefield that it's really hard to deal with. And Tyver Kel lets you do that with its ultimate. It's pretty hard to get to the ultimate. I'm, I'm not expecting that to happen too often. I've seen versions of this deck where you run like Vorin Clex as well in the deck because you can ramp up to it. And then it's a way to kind of get out Tyver Kel uh, really quickly. I, that can definitely happen. That's not the version that we're playing here, though. We're, we're kind of going for something a little bit different where it's more focused on just being elf tribal. Like it, we are all focused on elves. Uh, and so other cards that make this worth playing uh, is Herald Unites the Herald Unites the Elves. So are going to keep doing this zooming in thing. Four mana, first part, side of it. Mill three cards. You may put an Elf card or a Tyvar card, the card Tyvar we just saw, from your graveyard onto the battlefield. So if you've already had stuff die, this is turn four, so things probably have died already or, or whatever else is happening. You may already have an Elf on the battle in there. But you're also milling three cards, which in an, a deck that's playing Tyvars and Elves, yeah, you might just run th into three uh, three elves or maybe mill over like another Herald Unites Elves. Three may not be enough to always hit you an Elf or a Tyvar, but a really good chance of doing it. And so that's busted. That's good. Then the two number two side of it, um, counter each, each Elf you control gets a plus one, plus one counter onto it. That's just busted. That's really, really good. Uh, that's just, uh, this is the best elf lord I think we've had because plus and plus encounters on everything is really good. Uh, and then whenever an elf you control attacks his turn on the on the third one, target creature and opponent controls gets negative one and negative one until in a turn. So we attack with all of our elves. Let's say that we built up our, our a board full of elves, which we can do pretty well with this deck. Then this happens on turn six or whatever, right? Because Herald comes out turn four. We have ways to ramp into it, but not necessarily. But turn four, put counters onto everything, and then turn six, we get to swing in with all of our elves, kill most of their board, most likely with this, if we have enough elves, and just hit him for damage for lethal. So this is a card that does win us games against decks that don't have board wipes or enough interaction to stop this from happening. Uh, and so, which means that we are going to be winning games with that for sure at times. And just when and how often is, is more of the question. Like... And people have to be bringing lots of extra interaction to be able to deal with that kind of thing as well. So how do we build a board full of elves? Well, first off, let's just kind of go through the ones we have already. Uh, Wildwood Tracker and Wildwood Preserver are cards that were elves are already we've had that are good. Those are kind of the only cards that we're keeping besides uh, Turn Timber Symbiosis as a three of and Agonim's Awakening, which, by the way, works amazing with Tyver Kel being able to give us all of our black mana that we need and going and grabbing any of our elves, which we have, you know, enough stuff on the one drop, two drop, a three drop slot that we can easily just kind of put a massive amount of stuff on the board as well as skim far standard stage, which we'll get to in a little bit. Uh, but so basically Wildwood Tracker is good. Our other one drops here is Jaspera Sentinel, which is pretty nice. So one mana, one, two reach, you can tap an untapped creature you controlled add one mana of any color. So this is 
a very not good version of Lana War Elves, but at least it has reach, so it can it does have that side of it where it, it can be pretty nice. And it can be a Lana War Elves for us, basically, as long as we have other things to tap out. So we play Jasper Sentinel on turn one. And then we play something like War, uh, Elvish Warmaster on turn two, and then potentially another one drop uh, with Jesper Sentinel uh, by tapping our Elvish Warmaster and Jesper Sentinel, which then will give us uh, another elf. And with Elvish Warmaster, another elf. So Elvish Warmaster, here's the other card that's really just powerful and the reason why we can go super wide with this deck really quickly. Two mana, two, two. Whenever one or more elves enters a battlefield under your control, create a one, one green elf warrior creature token um, this ability triggers only once each turn. If it didn't have that text, this would be insanely busted. First off, it would trigger itself. But um, So yeah, this ability uh, triggers only once each turn, but that's still enough. And then we also have the side of, if you did have tons of mana, which with Typer, we have ways to ramp up into tons of mana. Seven mana, LZ control, get plus two, plus two, and gain death attention on a turn. So we have another way to kind of give a Lord effect to all of our stuff, which means we already have two. <laughs> which is this is one of the biggest issues with elves in the past is just like not being able to have enough consistent ways that you can do that so now we already have two pretty decent ways to just give everything bonuses uh tyver kale also kind of being able to be another win condition out of it as well uh we also get canopy technician sorry i'm not going i'm kind of jumping around throughout the deck but this is just another one i wanted to talk about four mana other elves you control get plus one plus one it can also tap to add three mana which is just really nice i I wasn't sure if I loved this card necessarily, but it's just a really good thing to hit with Herald Unites the Elves. We're running two of of it just because it is another Elf Lord. It does help us go wide, and I wanted it in the deck, but it's also making us like trim down on some of our other better cards like Skinford Shadow Mage or all these things that might be worth better. Uh, and so uh, just talking through the different cards that we've got here, uh, Skinford Shadow Sage, uh, pretty interesting one. Four mana, two, five, uh, enters the battlefield, you choose one of these. Each opponent loses X life, where X is the, num the greatest uh, number of creatures you control that have the creature type in common. So if you can just have this be an Im immediate kill card, it's awesome, which this is a pretty good thing to hit with Herald, Herald Unites the Elves. If it's just a free elf for us that does five points of damage to their face or gains us five life, so the other side of it says we gain life equal to the number of creatures that are in common. And so we either have this do X damage to face or X damage, to, or, or we gain X life. Um, and so as a one of, I, I'm honestly tempted to burn two copies of this because I do think this can be pretty, pretty powerful in this deck, but it's also dead in other matchups. So I, I'm not sure exactly. This is a great thing to hit with Agnes Awakening, great thing to hit with Herald Unites the Elves. I, it's something we want to mill over and hopefully run it into at some point during the game and it can just win us the game immediately, but I'm not sure that it's the main game plan. It's, it's a fun one, basically. Uh, and so I, I like Skype, Skype for Shadow Sage. But we'll see. And so basically, those are our best like hits that we can get with Herald Unites the Elves uh, and everything else there. Uh, all right. So jumping into Skimfart Adventure, some of our other elves in the two drop slot. We also get uh, whenever a non-token elf or, or, or Berserker card you control dies, you draw a card and you lose one life. Pretty dang good stuff, actually. Uh, so just being able to have this game, draw us cards, we have another way to draw cards now in our deck. So not only do we have Herald as well, Herald King of Skimfar. Enter the battlefield, look at top five cards of your library, you reveal an elf, a warrior, or a Tyvar card from among them, put them into your hand, put the rest into the bottom of the library in random order. It's also just a 3-2 with Menace. I actually trimmed down just two copies of this because I felt like there was just better stuff to be doing than just this on the three drop slot. Like Realm Walker, I actually like better. Um, I, I kinda, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe it's three copies of Herald and three copies of Realm Walker, but with this being legendary anyway, and we have other ways to dig into it as well. Uh, that I kind of like Realm Walker being another for, source of a card advantage for us too. So three mana, as enters battlefield, choose any creature type. This is a changeling, so it is an elf, as well as everything else. <coughs> you may look at the top card of your library anytime, and we cast creature spells from the, of the chosen type from the top of your library. So this, with this out and everything else, and Tyver to be able to ramp us up, and Canopy Tactician, Jasper Sentinel to be able to just kind of keep adding a little bit of extra mana, we can just be playing elves from the top of our deck up until we find our better things. You know, Herald Unites Elves, lands, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then it's fine. So this is basically a deck. I, I think I talked about all the different cards. Okay, two copies of Binding the Old Gods just as a way to have some removal in the deck. We need, it destroys any target non-land permanent you control. It goes and searches a forest card for us, which, by the way, it's just a forest card, not a, a, a basic forest card. So you can search up Shocklands. You can trip, search up the uh, Snowlands with this. Um, the Snowlands that are forests, at least, uh, that are the dual Snowlands, are forest cards. So they are tutorable. 
might be worth playing that in, in kind of snow, snow decks. And then also turn three, creatures control gain death touch until end of turn. Let's just have an ability to swing in uh, for a turn with it. So Binding of Gods, I think, is a decent two of. It might be better just be running like Heartless Axe or something uh, cheaper in the early game, especially with Tyra being able to give us some extra mana ramp there. Uh, but I, I figured why not? We're, we're going to try it out. Um, I wanted to play new stuff in this deck. All right, so what's like the best way to play this one out? So that, I think I went through all the cards. Basically, we have the new pathway lands to work with this. I guess Skemfar Hall, let's go ahead and talk about real quick as well. And then I'll kind of talk about what we want to be doing with this. This also is just decent. Uh, five mana, which again, Tyvar can help us get to this pretty quickly. Uh, we technically need six mana with this because you need to have the five mana and tap this card as well. So six lands altogether, six mana. Uh, tap this, sacrifice it up to one target creature you don't control gets negative two, negative two, and until end of turn. And you get two elf warrior tokens, which if you already have like the other uh, guys that make more elf tokens, this can end up being like four creatures for you pretty quickly. Uh, activate this only anytime you cast a sorcery. So only time you can cast a sorcery, that's probably the biggest downside of it, but uh, it's, it's still worth running two of. So we're running two of in the deck. Uh, we're okay to have a couple tap lands with all the other stuff that we have going on in this deck. Everything else is just basically forest swamps, uh, some ways to make sure we can hit all of our colors. And we're, we're a little bit heavier into green, so more forest, fewer swamps, um, and that's fine. We have Agonim's Awakenings still kind of help us there. All right, so how do we want this deck to play out? I think the best way to, to go for it is like probably turn one, Jesper is Sentinel. Turn two, uh, Elvish Warmaster. Uh, into a uh, into land, uh, Wildwood Tracker with Jasper Sentinel. All of a sudden you have um, one, two, three, four elves on the battlefield by turn two. Uh, turn three, I think is something like either play out like a Herald Unites Elves. You'll have m mana with Jasper Sentinel, uh, something like this. But you could also just hold up like Wildborn Preserver. I, this is where I think Wildborn Preserver actually finally has a deck where it's powerful enough to be played. Uh, so this has been around for a little while. Whenever uh, a non-human creature you control enters the battlefield, you can uh, pay X and put X counters onto Wildborn Preserver. Well, this works so, so well with Elvish Warmaster and with just having ramp in general where anytime that so wildborn preserver enters the battlefield it'll cause elvish warmaster to create an, an extra elf token as long as the first time this turn but you can finally play something on flash which is one of our few things that lets us do it on their turn as well to kind of add a little bit more extra value to elvish warmaster uh and then wild Pres preserver will have the elf the other elf token enter the battlefield we can suddenly make Wildborn Preserver into whatever, how much mana we have. We can make it a really big creature. And with Tyver Kel, like in the late game, this can be a massive, massive creature. Or in the early game, it can just be a pretty quick 4-4. And suddenly turn three, turn four, we're untapping with like, uh, we'll have like six elves and untap with, yeah, we'll have, we'll have six elves and probably about 15 power to be swinging in with on turn four. And that's like not even going crazy with this deck. That's just playing the cards that we have here. You know, like that's that's not playing anything on turn three or maybe playing like Wildwood Tracker, play, flashing this in, tapping Jasper Sentinel once the token comes in to be able to add up, uh, you know, uh, an extra two to three mana to make this a four, four or a five, five. And that's just a pretty decent turn for turn three play. Not even like doing anything super crazy. That's just good, you know? And then maybe we run into a canopy tactician uh, off the top and then gives everything plus one, plus one, and we swing in for the win. Like, that's a decent turn for kill. Like, that, that's strategy. That's, this is good. And so this deck has the ability to do that kind of stuff. And then the cool thing about this is that we have that kind of strategy, that kind of good things that we're playing anyway. And then we get to play all this other stuff that just helps us draw the cards, helps us still like the, this avenger still is a three one as an attacker still is good it'll also have death touch oftentimes you know in our deck as well to be able to swing in and, and that becomes a little bit better realm walker being just a really good blocker for us as well as just be able to kind of help get more card advantage herald unites the elves for card advantage heart uh that's the biggest thing you don't typically have you don't have this much card advantage um as etb triggers as much as you do uh with with other elves like typically it was it was um the uh, what, was, what was the card there? Anytime you cast a creature card, you would draw a card. That was played in Elves a lot. But it it doesn't do something necessarily the turn it comes out. You're usually playing that in turn four, and it doesn't do anything. And then hopefully it survives. Then the next turn you get to go off with it. Well, these ones, uh, we don't need to go as crazy as as um, um, Beast Whisperer. That's the card. Beast Whisperer necessarily. But they all bring up value immediately, which I think is ultimately better. 
Um, and so that's why I'm really excited for this. I think that this is a pretty good deck how it is. The, the biggest thing I, I need to see is how good Harold is, how good Jasper Sentinel is. If we actually want to be playing Jasper Sentinel, it might be better just to kind of get rid of this and not have the ramp. Uh, maybe maybe add in Land or Visionary, which is another way for us to draw cards, have a little bit more ramp. We might just want full copies of Tyver Kell and, and more copies of Skin for Shadow Sage. Who knows? I, we don't know enough about this to really know uh, what the best deck is, but I, I put together one that I think is going to be consistently decent. Um, and so I hope you guys try this out. Uh, biggest changes you might want to make: Binding of Old Gods. If you're, you know, it, it's it isn't uncommon, so hopefully people are able to kind of get that one into your decks. If not, though, just add in Heartless Acts. Add in things you already have. Other other good early game removals probably better. Uh, but overall, I think this deck has a decent shot at going at, doing well. Uh, let's go ahead and simulate a couple of draws, just to kind of showcase the type of thing you can do. Uh, this is something I was thinking that we could also do with this as well. So this deck. Or this hand, um, only two lands, but we have Avenger right away. If ever this dies, or sorry, it says whenever another non-token. So whenever this dies, it doesn't actually do much. But uh, it might be a keep, probably not if you have a bunch of three drops, but you know, hopefully draw into some other lands. Um, this one, three lands, Wildborn Preserver, Jasper Sentinel turn one. We have Wildborn Preserver turn two. We can tap to play out a second Jasper Sentinel. Um, and suddenly... In the next and then the next turn herald unites the l so we'll draw a couple turns uh and then you'll mill three cards which will be uh one two three we hit uh we hit an elf with herald unites the l's i think we have one extra mana to put a counter onto wild preserver we have a three three uh and you have a realm walker on the battlefield which then can be looking at other stuff off the top of the library just doing crazy shenanigans super awesome stuff it's powerful i really like this deck like there's just there's, it does good things uh and also sometimes draws zero lands. Wow, that's really bad. Okay, new, new hand. <laughs> that's my luck. That's how it always works for me. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, sorry that we're doing this kind of content rather than other stuff before Caltan, but also not sorry because this is what's interesting. So you're welcome. And like, subscribe, all that stuff. Do it because uh, it, it helps me a lot. I appreciate it. You know. Okay, bye.